A lot of people, when they think of a table, they don't think of it being technology. They see iPads, they see Apple computers, they see smart boards. But I would argue that the table is actually another piece of technology. First of all, you walk in and it's a single piece of wood. It establishes right off the bat that this is something we do together. It also forces everyone to, to look at each other. The shape of the table means you can see everyone at the table, you can hear what they're saying, you can look at each other. So it's developing the kids ability to really communicate with one another, address each other's points, and feeling that connectedness. At this age, we have such a talented group of teachers who are really invested in having the kids take ownership of their education. Um, and we have a group of kids who, you know, as I mentioned, are so excited about process of learning and so you know, as I said it, it felt like a natural fit for me to sort of institute the system and it's for sure it's definitely I think it's exciting. It's not surface level learning at all it's really about getting the kids to do the learning themselves it's about experiential hands-on learning so that they're at the center and the teacher steps out of the way and we do a lot of that in our history classes and I think in other classes at Shore Country Day School. Whether you call it Harkness or whether you call it student-centered learning, it's all pretty much the same thing. It really makes you think about your initial ideas on a topic. Um, you know, so you might go into a discussion and you're like, robber barons were all super horrible and they didn't do anything for the world at all. Um, and then you get someone else's point of view and you start to realize that there are more than one side to history. I think it is a lot of talking, but all the talking allows you to get into the subject in a different way. Because instead of just hearing everybody, you're processing what they're saying and you're adding it to your own opinion. And then you can, it completely changes the way you think. As a metaphor for learning, it is all one piece. That no one can do this alone. The table can't stand alone with only one leg, it can't stand with only two legs. It needs everybody at that table to contribute, to listen, to be a part of the discussion, to be a part of the questioning. You know, pretty much every Shore faculty member is also a coach. Uh, and I think about Harkness like I think about practice. Um, you know, it, it's not about me talking for an hour about what we're going to do when we take the field. Um, I have to set up an environment where I'm allowing kids to do things on their own and then we can talk about it and then we can go try it again. And so for me, Harkness fits in with that philosophy where they really have internalized a lot of those skills and are able to demonstrate what you know, a good argument looks like, what it means to listen actively and respectfully, um, how to invite somebody in to a conversation. Um, and so we're developing kind of those teamwork skills that we, we look at, whether it's on stage in theater, uh, in the musical, or on the soccer field. Um, we want to also cultivate those same skills in the classroom, too. No, I think it's very important to be able to talk to people, to be able to listen. And really, you know, when you listen, you get to learn a lot more than when you're just talking. The kids know that they every oar has to be in the water for the boat to go forward. They really get that. They're all in it together and there's an equal stake and ownership in the discussion. It makes them so much more motivated and it, it carries on through their whole life. They understand, oh, I did this by myself. I worked with my peers to come to meaningful understanding. Mr. Clark, one of my history teachers, he always alludes to the fact that he's not teaching us, we're teaching ourselves and we're teaching him. As a team, we have to harness each of our collective strengths uh, and we have to compensate for all of our collective weaknesses. I think discussion-based classrooms really helps you mature and grow and be able to talk in a more um, you know, grown-up setting like a high school. There are a lot of secondary schools that do discussions, they talk about seminars in college, they talk about the kids running things in high school. And I always thought that that shouldn't be the preserve of 
mid high schoolers and college students, I thought, uh, and I think lots of people at, at Shore feel that sixth graders, seventh graders, eighth graders, fifth graders, fourth graders, they can all talk to each other and learn how to question and figure out your answers to difficult questions. Learning is socially interactive. It's, it's much more fun to do it with somebody else. I think that discussion will stay with me for the rest of my life.